Hey guys, Level Cap here, and today we're going to cover top tips for getting into Battlefield 2042. This game changes things up from the previous Battlefields in pretty big ways, and even if you're a seasoned veteran, you may feel a little lost jumping into 2042 for the first time. Today's video will give you some of my best starting tips, and if you're already hours into the game, there's a good chance that you'll still learn something that you didn't know. And before we get into all the details, I've got a quick word from today's sponsor. I think we'd all agree that having hair can be pretty nice, but if you're a guy, there's a 66% chance you'll start losing it by the age of 35. The good news is today's sponsor Keeps can help with that. They offer at-home hair loss prevention treatment that is FDA approved. Unfortunately, you can't save what you've already lost, so prevention is key here. The sooner you start using Keeps, the more hair you can save. They make it super easy to get started, and you don't even have to leave your house. Their doctors are standing by online to recommend treatment and ship your medication every three months directly to your door. And while it can take anywhere between four and 12 months to really start seeing results, I think these before and after photos really speak for themselves. Again, prevention is key, so don't waste more time watching your hair go down the shower drain. If you're ready to take action and prevent hair loss, go to keeps.com slash level cap or click the link in the description to receive 50% off your first order. That's K-E-E-P-S dot com slash level cap. All right, now as somebody who's played basically all the Battlefield games, I've always advocated to experiment and try out all the things in Battlefield so that you can become a more versatile player. Experimenting will not only help you determine what role you might be best at, but it also gives you an idea of how to fight against different classes and vehicles. That being said, there's a lot of specialists and vehicles to choose from, so where do you start? Angel, or Angel, is one of the best and simplest specialists in the game. He distributes armor and ammo at the same time from throwable packs. He can give himself armor and ammo, which keeps him topped off for his next engagement. And he can also revive anyone on his team and his revive gives them 20 armor as well. Plus he can call in a resupply crate to top off gadgets and ammo or let his team top off their gadgets and ammo. The crate itself can also be used as a bit of cover in a pinch. This guy is solid for all modes. Even if you want to play hazard zone, he's a must pick specialist with a super low skill ceiling. He should maximize your XP early on with all the revives, resupplies, and added health to win more firefights. Now how about weapons? The M5A3 Assault Rifle, the PBX45 SMG, and the SWS10 Sniper are my top picks when you just start the game and don't have any unlocks or additional attachments. They're extremely good starting weapons and can hold up into the end game with further attachment unlocks. Use the PBX45 for close to medium range, the M5A3 for similar situations, and the SWS10 for extreme long range sniping. Go for headshots when possible. However, once you hit rank 18, you will unlock the PP29, which is one of the best guns in the game at its base values. Sure, it may be surpassed by some other weapons once you get 300 kills worth of attachments with them, but until then the PP29 can do pretty much everything. Sadly, assault rifles have pretty bad bullet spread making most of them unviable choices. I'm pretty sure this will eventually get balanced out, but at least at the time of making this video the PP29 is the current meta weapon. It has a massive magazine, can easily drop three players in a single mag, and has good damage at range and can hit fire effectively in close quarters. Aside from sniping, it can pretty much do everything. And speaking of sniping, the SWS-10 is a fantastic rifle, but once you unlock the DXR-1 at rank 24, well, there's no going back. The muzzle velocity, damage, and low drop makes this a very effective sniper rifle, even without any attachments. Sniping and breakthrough will yield a target-rich environment where you can just absolutely mop up kills. The SVK is also a good DMR but requires decent skill to be effective compared to the PP29. That being said, using its base high powered ammunition, it's a two shot kill at pretty much any range. Now sure, some of these unlocks that you get at higher levels sound good, but what about actually ranking up and getting to those higher levels? 2042 can feel like a bit of a grind since there aren't as many weapons and you won't be earning one each rank and the good ones are few and far between. 
Maxing out your point earning can make this process go by a lot quicker, and fortunately, there's a lot of different ways to go about it. For my personal testing, playing Hazard Zone is the fastest way to rank up, but it's also a little slower for getting weapon attachments since you're getting less kills per match, and also you're probably not going to be experimenting with as many different weapons while playing Hazard Zone. The mode also might not be your cup of tea being an extraction royale and all. That being said, if you're with a good squad and winning rounds, you can get anywhere from 20,000 to 35,000 XP per 15 minute match. This is incredibly good XP for the time spent playing. However, if you're really not feeling Hazard Zone, All Out Warfare can be played for decent XP generation as well. Right now, the fastest way to get XP is to play on Breakthrough with Proximity Sensor Grenades and an Ammo Crate. Throw both of your proxy grenades into high combat areas, get 5 XP per spot, and 50 XP per kill assist. That's when somebody kills the enemy that you have spotted with your motion grenade. When the target saturation is extremely high, the point generation is through the roof. And in my opinion, the points awarded for this are too much and probably will get nerfed since some of my best killing and vehicle destruction games don't even come close to a decent round of just throwing proximity sensor grenades. Use your ammo crate to regenerate your grenades and keep throwing them. You can even combine this with other methods of spotting. Many vehicles have a spotter seat. It's seat four on a tank and seat two in the Nightbird helicopter. Casper's drone is also designed to spot and is pretty good at it, so make sure that you're spotting enemies and make sure to do it around where your team is fighting to try and maximize your actual kill assist. The act of spotting itself will get you a lot of ribbons. Ribbons are a great way of generating XP and you can get them from simply capping objectives, killing your enemies, or assisting your teammates in various ways. Each ribbon can also be ranked up to level three per match and you can track your progress by opening the scoreboard mid-match. If you max out one of your ribbons, like say your assist ribbon, you may wanna consider switching your playstyle to try and max out your other ribbons before the match ends to again, maximize your XP generation. Now, if you're struggling online or just want to take a break from the online experience, you can play offline all-out warfare against bots. Bringing a machine gun or vehicle into the fray will allow you to kill bots at ridiculous speed. To balance things out, you cannot generate ribbons in this mode or unlock weapon attachments at least beyond the first few per gun, but you can simply farm bots so quickly that you can get about a thousand XP per minute if it's a good map for getting kills. Breakthrough will maximize your target saturation as well. However, solo play does have an XP cap limit, so just be aware of that if your UI brings that up at some point. Now, when playing online, you might be tempted to match into Breakthrough exclusively for increased target saturation, expecting to get more XP. However, Conquest will net you a lot more flag cap points and also the micro battles between two points can be very intense and net a lot of kills without the extremely punishing environment of Breakthrough. So be sure to switch between the two modes and see which one you like or just mix it up for variety. Now sadly, DICE has turned off a lot of the unlock and XP generation potential in Portal due to the massive exploits. If you Google how to rank up or get XP fast, you might find some videos made on launch day showing you how to make a Portal server to basically farm bots and unlock stuff at ridiculous rates. DICE had to massively limit XP generation and unlocks in Portal to prevent people from basically breaking the system, but at the same time they made it so that you can't really get weapon unlocks playing TDM either, which is the traditional way that I've always got my weapon unlocks because you need to kill players to get weapon unlocks and TDM is the fastest and most enjoyable way to do that in my opinion. Now DICE is looking for a solution to this problem and it's possible that they'll implement some standardized game modes with XP generation turned on and unlocks turned on, in which case there might be some viable XP grinding and unlock grinding in Portal or at least the Portal TDM variations that they come up with. Keep your eyes out for that and if you're watching this video at a later date, it might already be in the game. Now, my next tip might sound like a no-brainer, but if you're not taking advantage of 2042 vehicles, then you're missing out. Many of them are amazing, even in their basic setup. I have my Nightbird fully maxed out, but I still use its based weapons because they're honestly some of the best. I've gone on 40 plus kill sprees in that helicopter with its base setup, so if you're a decent pilot, man, pop into that Nightbird and you will absolutely decimate. That being said, flying is a higher skill skill ceiling and if it's not your thing, the basic transport vehicles are often available 
and crazy powerful. The LATV-4 Recon is fast and comes with a mounted minigun that pulverizes enemies. It is, however, easy to get shot out of the driver and gunner seat, so it makes sense to spin it around so the rear is facing your enemy while you mow them down. You can also call it in on objectives, including elevated positions to use as a turret. And once you farm enough kills with this vehicle, you can actually equip a 30 millimeter cannon on it that decimates everything. I prefer the 30 millimeter over the 50, the 50 being the last unlock you get, as the 30 allows for extremely effective air and infantry kills. It's such an inexpensive vehicle, but can absolutely decimate, especially once it's fully upgraded. Now, the hover tank, if you're not aware of this by now, is so good it's practically a meme. Its armor protects it from minigun fire and anti-personnel rockets and grenades, so really heavy munitions are the only way to take them down, unless you get lucky and shoot at the driver and gunner, but it's extremely tricky and nearly impossible when it's moving fast. You'll need to rank up a little before you unlock this vehicle, but if you see one driving by, feel free to pop in for some good killing potential. And while the hover tank can be fun, to drive solo and park on an objective and use its gun to mow people down, it's so much better when playing with a friend. Getting someone on the gun while the other person dodges and weaves will make you a nearly impossible target to hit. In all honesty, I wouldn't be surprised if this vehicle gets a nerf, so use it while you can. Now also in the realm of call-ins, the Ranger, aka Robo Dog, is crazy good. It spots enemies and engages them at considerable range. Plus, it's so heavily armored that it can't be taken down easily, forcing solo infantry to disengage or try and kill the operator. Check your call-in menu frequently or whenever you remember and grab this guy when he's available. Also, I believe it stays alive when you go into a death state, so if you're in a good squad that's reviving a lot, your ranger can stay up for quite a while as long as your squad mates keep reviving you. Now, beyond these specific tips, my general guidance is that Battlefield 2042 is a hard game, so be prepared for that. The saturation of players doesn't allow for loose gameplay. Stick to cover and take advantage of vehicles when you can. Learn the classes and vehicles and figure out what your team needs to help win a match. And of course, Battlefield is always better when played with friends, so squad up when possible. I hope you guys found this video informative. I hope it helps you start your Battlefield 2042 journey. As always, thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe if you enjoyed this content, and I'll see you next time. This is Level Cap, signing off.